Vauxhall and General Motors have probably never had it so good because in the past five years their flagship Amiga has been consistently at the top of the executive car charts. In that time they've beaten off the likes of the Ford Scorpio and the Rover 800. They've literally beaten those two cars into submission. The quirky frog-eyed Scorpio we never really took to and the Rover 800 after all was just a rover. So Vauxhall have taken the decision to freshen the Amiga range up, give it a new lease of life for the next three to four years before their next generation executive saloons and estates arrive. It's a very welcome upgrade to a car that's such a familiar sight on our roads. In fact, since its introduction in 1994, some 600,000 Amigas have been built at the plant in Germany. Indeed, Britain and Germany are the main markets for the Amiga. Three out of four buyers choose the saloon over the estate. And Vauxhall say that their designers and engineers have changed over a third of the car's 8,000 components. The most obvious are its exterior looks with a new bonnet and boot, new front and rear lights, colour keyed bumpers and sills and new ranges of alloy wheels, plus a new 2.2 litre four cylinder engine that now makes, if my sums are right, five engines to choose from. The entry level 2 litre 16 valve, the new to the range 2.2, the 2.5 V6, the 2.5 turbo diesel and the 3 litre V6, all available in manual or auto and in saloon or estate. Now, moving inside, again, it's an all-new interior. Vauxhall have tried to create, well, a touch of luxury, and I think they've pretty much succeeded. The dashboard has a soft-touch feel to it. There's a new centre console with heating and ventilation controls and a brand-new stereo system, too. Now, Vauxhall, like most manufacturers, are incorporating a satellite navigation system into the car, and you can have the option of a 5-inch television monitor screen right there, giving you the sat-nav. There's plenty of space for passengers and some handy storage bins too. It has to be said that the Amiga was always a decent car to drive. Rear wheel drive, a decent chassis and setup. And if you pick the 3 litre V6, well a real stormer of an engine. 211 brake horsepower on tap and very respectable 0 to 60 times of just over 8 seconds, top speed of 150 miles an hour. The 3 litre V6 of course continues into the new range in either Elite or MV6 form. This is the MV6 and this in my opinion is the pick of the bunch. It gets a lowered sport suspension by 15 millimeters, stiffer ride, a touch anyway, and unique alloy wheels and an aluminium dashboard. The base 2-litre engines don't really offer much get-up-and-go when pulling such a big car with only 136 brake horsepower. The 2.2-litre engine already seen in the Sintra produces 144 brake horsepower and the 2.5 V6 gets 170. If you must have diesel, well, you can have the 2.5-litre inline 6 with 130 brake horsepower. But stand by because next year a flagship Amiga will be available with an aluminium 300 brake horsepower V8 engine, the same as we've seen in the Corvette. Now, although Vauxhall make great play of competing with the main German manufacturers like Mercedes, BMW and Audi, in reality, the user chooser company car driver who has perhaps 25 to 30,000 pounds to spend on their next car, well, I'm afraid they're going to choose an E-Class or an A6 or a 5 Series over the Amiga, no matter how good this car is. The company car driver who doesn't have a choice, well, this is no bad car to have in their driveway. But perhaps the main rivals for the new Amiga are the Saab 95, the Volvo S80 or the new Rover 75. So the Amiga, not before time, has had a very welcome facelift, and that's really all that's happened with the car. The underpinnings remain the same as the outgoing Amiga model. It's very spacious, it's extremely well built. It's a car that can take on the might of Mercedes, BMW and Audi. It's just a shame it's got the wrong badge on it.